What happened in the Eastern Cape province between 2019 and 2024 that resulted in the improvement of the National Senior Certificate Pass Rate? That is the big question this brief video production seeks to answer. Considering the fact that this used to be a province that ranked the least in the country and now is at the sixth position with an 81,4% pass rate for the class of 2023, this is indeed a phenomenal achievement. We did it in the Eastern Cape Star. Let that sink into everybody who never believed in our abilities to work hard to achieve this greatness. We are not yet done. More great things are coming from this province. Zooming into the stats of specific districts and schools of the Eastern Cape reveals several instances of giant leaps in performance over a short space of time ranging from one to three years, making this accomplishment even more mysterious. How did the Eastern Cape nail it? Which programs led to this? Come with us as we take a short journey to probe and uncover what was done during the term of the sixth administration to realize these remarkable achievements. This video production is also intended to form part of the report that will be submitted by the current political administration on the work it has done in the education sector since coming into office in 2019. The improvement started as far back as 2017 where a situational analysis was done to determine the blockages for improvement and what needed to be done to move beyond the 50% barrier. Upon realizing that the district was, uh, you know, at the bottom in terms of the Eastern Cape Department of Education's rankings, uh, we then organized uh, a district education summit, working in collaboration with the local municipalities. And, and through, through that education summit, uh, which embraced the involvement of all stakeholders in the district, we had a resolutions committee that was seated and they came up with a clear plan on what needs to be done, when, how, by whom. Through the situational analysis, we identified that we needed to put in place two areas for improvement. One uh, is the systems that needed improvement and two, that the structures that we needed to improve. After this, we needed to make sure that we capacitated the, the, all our structures and making sure that all posts were filled in our districts and, our, and in our schools. We then further went on to look at the functionality of our schools, making sure that there is a teacher for every subject, there is a textbook for every learner, and that teachers teach for the full duration of the lesson and completed the curriculum on time. Let me extend a profound word of gratitude to team education led by Honorable MEC Fundi Garde for the work they have done to get us over the 80% target we set ourselves at the beginning of this term of government. Thank you, Tike. Team Education, Koka Amakosa, Otishara, Abafundi. How could you explain the fact that in 2016, the Amatole West Education District, which ranked position 75 in the entire country out of 75 districts, hardly three years later, was hailed the third most improved district and it received an award from the Minister of Basic Education. The key factor that played a big role in the improvement of our results was our data analysis. Data ensured that it tells a story of what the current situation was for everybody in the system. Once everybody understood how to analyze and read their data, it helped in terms of developing interventions and where to place our energy. The province decided to take a differentiated approach to improving our results. And that meant that uh, uh, every school was seen as different, every district was seen as different, every learner was seen as different, and every subject was seen as different. There was no one-size-fits-all uh, approach. Our strategy is not one-size-fits-all in terms of the schools because as you categorize the schools you must make sure that you have your aggressive strategies for the schools that are underperforming. 
In 2019, as the district director, I took a decision to lift all the teachers in Hilltown and place them in different schools in the district. And we appointed new educators in that school and I lifted the principal of Hilltown and I placed him in another school. And now the principal that is appointed at Hilltown received a strong message and instruction from the district leadership to ensure that he improved the performance of the school. That school in 2020 was at 20%. In 2021, it was at 48%. In 2022, Hill Town is at 100%. Our strategies are hinged on two documents, the LACE document and the Education Systems Transformation Plan. So we have adopted the collaborative approach. So the approach that we have adopted has given us the performance of 82.7%. In 2023, we decided not to reinvent the wheel. We continued with what is working. Motivation session, curriculum delivery at all levels, but at the end, we made sure that we adopted a philosophy that you cannot manage what you cannot measure. And what gets monitored gets done. It has become the daily bread, the daily activity that has been done by our officials and our schools and our learners and our parents in monitoring their targets, in monitoring the syllabus coverage, in monitoring the revision plan. And lastly, we have been assisted by the consultant, Jen, in trying to improve our underperformance because the district felt that we still need to account for the 18% that could not make it in 2022. If you just trace back for the last three, four years, there's an upward trajectory in the results of the Eastern Cape. And the assistance of these EAs and GSAs cannot be underestimated when it comes to the results because they freed up the hands of educators and district officials in the community at large. The link between a higher standard of living and better performance in examinations is a long-established fact. Hence, we have always seen many instances of 100% pass rate amongst the former Model C schools. So how is it possible that a high school situated in Danzane Township adjacent to a squatter camp has been able to achieve a 100% pass rate for 10 consecutive years between 2013 and 2022? It was 100% work in Upumango Shop. It was 100% work in Upumango is on the 17th of January. Especially maths and science, way back around the 4th of January. We have afternoon classes, morning classes, Saturday classes, Sunday classes. So not every school operates like that, but here at Uluazi, we, we do have that. And grade 12 of Uluazi, they attend from Monday to Monday since they do have Saturday classes and they also have Sunday classes. We have a camp in June, September and December. So the June camp is for their June examination, the September camp is for their trial examination, and then for the December camp um, uh, is for their final examination. I'll be nice social life. So that's, that's, that's how now you end up producing good results because I'll be nice social life. It's books, books, books. That, that's the purpose of the camp, you know, because when you're at home, there's TV, there's phones, there's laptops. So when you're here in the camp, there is no such thing. I think what is exciting now, as we're talking, is the commitment by the provincial government through the office of the premier that this school is going to be a mega school. It's clear uh, the Premier has been indicating, has been saying in his state of the province address. Uh, well, before that, he has been part of the school, Mr. Mabuyan. He has been supporting the school uh, throughout both of its performance. He has been visiting the school, supporting where he can. But the most fundamental thing that we are, we are looking for is this infrastructure part, which I think they are working on. 
because already they have started to erect prefabs that other site to show that uh, they're going to decan this other site and ensure that they build as we see uh, that they, they, are, they are moving in other in other areas so we are still waiting okay in Dobana, Kwaki Viscolo, because Abandon Abe we've got 1,840, if I'm not mistaken, in Abandon Abe Ulas. Who create 8 in JA, I believe we've got 410 Lenas. So, Wongum Zalwa Lap, M Tanzan, Ufunufun is Abe Ulas. Nabanya Mogabasali town, Afunufun Zakle Ulas. So last year, Mr. Tata, the award go and you must say, yeah, you ban our position to South Africa. It pays. It always go to. It's always Dallas Kumayo. But it's always a little better zone. It's always it's the young position to South Africa. And the talent you have is land out that South Africa. We were at 63.2. There was a decline. Remember, 2020 it was COVID. Yeah. But we managed, we were the only district that has regressed by 1% in 2020. Even now, during the COVID, we have been able to sustain uh, the momentum. We have been able to phase in uh, some interventions in the context of the e learning program so that. Even even during the peak time, uh, education has been has been has been proceeding quite very well in the province, uh, despite the issue about the COVID. Last year, the Department of Education gave us a wonderful opportunity by providing our grade twelves with tablets. Those tablets assisted those learners very much. Looking at how they performed at the end of the year, we owe it their success to the tablets that were provided. By the distribution of these tablets, it bridged the gap between the teacher and the learner. We were able to teach them whilst they were at home 24-7 because of these tablets. One of the programs credited by the Eastern Cape Department of Education for contributing in the current upward trajectory of metric results is the mother tongue based bilingual education, which allows learners to be taught and examined in Isikosa and English or in Sesotho and English. This program was piloted in the Eastern Cape province in the lower grades in 2012 in the then Tofimbaba Education District. On the 18th of September 2020, during the peak of the COVID-19 pandemic, Education MEC Mr. Fundile Garde and his team activated the first trial exams in AM Zanz Senior Secondary School in the Krisani East Education District, where grade 12 learners were allowed to write subjects like maths and sciences in Isikosa and English. Sometimes as if man no level one but standard. In an event hosted by the department in March 2024, the MEC for Education applauded DDG Mr. Ray Chwakati and his team for hosting a mother tongue based bilingual education international summit at ICC East London and spoke passionately about the agency for the entire country to resolve the issue of language use in education to ensure that the previously disadvantaged communities do not continue to be disadvantaged. It was an international program that was because it talks to the issues of language which the world do not want to accept that your day to Nisabandwa. Bandwana Bachoni Meds, Bachona Analysis in a Comprehension. And the comprehension and analysis is on language, not in math and physics. That's why in the in the performance standards in the country, Ufika Sutabandwana bin the Africans are the ones that pass at 99% pass rate in the country. It's because the Africans and clean, the Africans a kitchen, the Africans quit dining hall, the Africans a school, 
i Afrikaans e mabale no dlal izoba i Afrikaans ku question paper noba wenzi af noba wenzi maths noba wenzi physics noba wenzi agriculture i Afrikaans now meaning that bani ed additional advantage from a comprehension point of view and from an analysis point of view scientifically so this issue of language culture and religion the country must resolve it the story of how the Eastern Cape province managed to improve its pass rate of grade 12 learners will not be complete without mentioning the role played by the political stability of the province. Did you know that for over five years there has been no strikes by educators in the province? Thanks to good working relations between the political leadership of the province, the senior management of the department and the leadership of the trade unions at provincial and district level. You see the results, you see the audit outcomes, you see the investment that we have brought in in this province. All that combined is as a result of political stability. Because where there is leadership and political stability, there is policy certainty and there's a direction where we go. But what I think is critical for us moving forward as a, a food for thought is that currently we have got a system that is on the rise. So you need to be anticipative that as, as a system Isinika i results as a right, inixa um um jaiba eba zalin, bebu ya bantuana e kapa, bebu ya bantuana e kzn, bebu ya bantuana e houtin, improver i ilena population yet. What does that mean in terms of the infrastructure plan? Because if you don't answer that question, you run a risk of overcrowded classrooms very soon. So as you celebrate their pass rate, how do you deal with additional classrooms that are going to be needed? So when the city man evale, um, this statement, ngalo mazwi no bulela, kubantu basempuma koloni, for the time that they have given to us, and uh, also the zeal and patience that they have given to us in managing their lives, because managing education in essence managing lives of the people. In the spirit of continuous improvement, the Eastern Cape Department of Education would like the new administration to take note of these pockets of excellence captured here and the strategies that have worked well to take the department forward so that this foundation can be used as a stepping stone to more achievements.